Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be about vector trimming in Adobe Fresco. So we're going to learn a new technique. Uh, it's actually not new, but it's been there for a while now. If you watched one of my older videos on brand new features in Adobe Fresco, you would have seen me covering this particular feature in Adobe Fresco. So if you haven't watched that video yet, you can find the link in the description box below or somewhere here in cards. So we'll use vector trimming to create this absolutely simple illustration. Since I always believe that you have to practice to master some technique, I decided that we'll go ahead and paint or create this simple illustration using the vector trimming technique. I do have a sketch and color palette for this, but I would highly recommend that you don't use the sketch, but draw with me instead. But in case you are not too confident, it's okay. Just go ahead and download the sketch from the link in the description box below. I'm going to use the same artboard. So the artboard that I've chosen is under custom. And if you go to digital, you have something called a square and we'll be using that for this illustration. Let me quickly go ahead and hide this thing and let's start everything from scratch. So one of the main things that you would need is this button here. Make sure you have it on your screen. If you don't see this, go to settings, go to touch shortcut and make sure you have turned it on. Okay, as the title suggests, it's vector trimming. So we'll be using only vector brushes for this illustration. So I'm gonna be using the vector brush that is the basic round. And I will set the size to about 14.5. You don't have to keep it at 14.5 exactly, but somewhere around that number would be okay. Let's go ahead and choose black and let's start illustrating. Before that, let me try to remove this egg rogue stroke. Click on your brush. So the theme that I've chosen is an underwater theme, which is very simple. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first draw some fishes. When you're normally trying to draw something, you would be very careful. That is, you know, make sure the edges match and, you know, make sure they go ahead and, and join stuff. There are no extra things like this and stuff like that. And if you have that, you can go to a eraser tool and try to erase it off. And oops, it erases other things and it's a pain. So what vector trimming does is I have two lines or three lines and now I want to make it into a triangle means cutting off all these extra bits. So I'm going to use the vector trimming technique and just trim this so that it's a beautiful, beautiful triangle with really sharp edges. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And let me tell you how to do that. So you have your triangle right now. Go ahead and draw a triangle like this or whatever shape this is. And you see your touch shortcut. Just double click it so that the center line gets highlighted. Now, when this gets highlighted, this becomes an eraser, but we don't need the eraser. So click on this outer ring right here. And now it becomes a vector trimming machine. That means if you just click and drag, it trims the excess from everything. You can use single line to clear those toes as well. It's as simple as that. And we're going to put that to use in our illustration today. So let's just get started. I'm just going to go ahead and make it to normal brush right now and make sure you're on your vector brush. And I will hide this, click on a new layer so that I can have a fresh start. And let's go ahead and draw some fishes. I'm going to go to the center of this artboard somewhere and just draw some fish like this. And you see, I'm not bothering about lines crossing. That's how you should do it as well. Just go ahead and just draw a fish. Maybe, I don't know. Like that, I guess. And then one here. That should be fine. And once your fish is ready, let's go ahead and draw some kelp. I think you call them kelp. There you go. I want this one overlapping here like that. And this. Like that. Let's make one which goes above the fish. That looks good. And here one. Let's make this here. And maybe one because there's some space here. I think I want one of these things to go like that. Okay, that looks good. And I'm not too happy with the fish, but it's okay. Okay, so this is done. And now we're going to go ahead and trim it. 
I need to add more elements, but I don't want to confuse you. So we'll go trim this one first. So what do you have to do? Go here, double click so that the center gets highlighted. Now it's an eraser. Now click on the outer ring and now it's a vector trimming machine. So let's go ahead and do that here. Gonna do that, do this, and this tiny baby here. And let's go ahead and try to do this. I don't know if it can take it. Yeah, that's because there was no overlap because if this line had come a little bit out, then there would be an overlap. But since there's no such thing as here, this is going to be a little tricky to actually cut it off. You might have to use the eraser itself. Bummer, but that's how life works. So, and then you click here. Okay, that's cool. Okay, this one, this one, this, and this. Let's do the same here. And the kelp, I want the kelp to go behind the fish. So I'm gonna click on this line and this line so that those things get erased. Okay, let's look at this one right now. I want this to be on the top. So I'm gonna click, click, and maybe click, click. Oh, no, let's do this behind so that they are kind of intertwined right now. And in here, obviously I want this on the front. No, I want this on the front. You can use two finger taps to undo things, by the way. And let's make sure this one is in the back and this is in the front. And in here. And let's remove that. And like this, so that they look so intertwined right now. Don't they look fascinating? It would have taken you hours to draw this without, you know, making sure they don't cross the lines and stuff like that. And like I told you, the vector trimming does have some disadvantages, especially when it's things like this. But, you know, you have to work with what you have, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and add some details to this. I have to go back and click on this or double click on this so that it goes back to the brush mode. Otherwise, it will still be in the vector trimming mode. So still on the vector brush. Now let's go ahead and add some stuff to our fish. Maybe something like this, something like that here, here like that, you want to fin, right, something like that, now I want some stuff here, maybe like this, and maybe, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, like that, like that, and like this, or maybe like this okay and i want one more here i'm going to go ahead and draw it like this and bring it all the way here there you go one more okay maybe one here that should be fine okay i think i'm happy with that now i know it looks so confusing but don't worry let's go back to vector trimming and then let's trim this off this off these two lines these two lines and these two these and these as well and these obviously so that they look nice okay so here comes the main thing i want this leaf to be on front of the kelp so i'll just do that and this one, you can put it in the back if you want. So then you have to erase these two. Let's make it like this. You can cut that and cut this and cut that and cut this. Like that. And there you go. And here, here. And be careful there. Okay, so that looks fine. I just want to add one tiny bit. So I'm going to go back. And I just want to make sure that I have these lines here like this. Again, don't worry about going beyond the lines. You can always use the vector trim. You can actually draw this like this. And delete it off. Wait a minute, let me add some eyes. 
our illustration is ready and now it's time to color this baby so let's go ahead and do that the one thing is if you're doing all these things and you want to color it with the fill tool you'll have to color in the same layer so i'm going to click on this and click on duplicate layer and hide the previous layer so that it doesn't go off anywhere and then use this layer now go to your fill tool and let's go ahead and choose some colors for the fish first i have so many colors here because i was trying things out but the color palette that i'm providing to you might have limited colors i'm going to click on orange and color this orange maybe some yellow and some yellow there and the top one i want it pink that looks good and you can actually color this pink as well and maybe choose some yellow again and color these two as yellow our fish is done and now let's choose the uh, the kelp I'm going to use the darker color now and I will put it into this and this. Maybe this, this and you need to color it properly. And then in here, I will choose this, this and there you go. Okay. And next up is the lighter one here and here. You won't be able to color this part here because it's outside the artboard, but that's okay. There you go. And that's, no, I want that to be lighter actually. So we'll leave it at that. And next we'll take a lighter green. And we'll color this. This one as well. You see the gap here? We're going to fill it up. And I see I forgot to fill this. Click and hold on the color. And then you can do this and it fills up that color. Okay. That's done. Now it's time for the leaves. I'm going to go ahead and choose again the bright green that we had. We'll just use that. You can just color them like this. You can actually color one color on one side. Or both. I'm going to go ahead and choose a lighter one. Color it like that. Okay, so that's done as well. And we have colored most of the things. Now I'll go back to the sketch layer or I just want to go below this layer and click on a new layer. And I'll go to the fill tool. Oops. And click on the color and I want something light like a blue. And I'm going to click and click on vector fill. So it has all these colors now. Now click on a new layer and let's go to a lighter blue. And we're going to make some bubbles. So go back to your vector brush. I'm going to make some bubbles right now. So like that you can increase the size so that it's quicker you can actually choose a little lighter color as well okay that's done and now let's add some stuff to the fishes so click on a new layer and i'm going to choose the orange that we have and reduce this to 14 again because that's some thing that i think will look nice oops you have to be on top of this layer. Go ahead and click that and make some things like this. It's up to you. You don't really have to do this. Let's choose the pink. And for orange, let's choose the pink again and do this and maybe do that and once you're done if you want to add more things to it you can always do that that is go back to your vector brush and i don't know choose black and you can add some bubbles like this and now let's go ahead and click on white and go to fill tool and just fill this up so illustration is ready and one thing I want to say is the vector trimming does not work just on lines. It works on shapes as well. So let me just quickly show you something. I'm going to go ahead and select this and draw some white. And let me go ahead and take some black and draw some black. So now let's go to vector trimming. I can click on this and it takes away the black. So like I told you, it works on both shapes and lines 
Okay, so that's it about vector trimming and I hope you learned something and it was useful. And I hope you were able to create something pretty simple with me and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified when I post a new video. I post a new fresco video every Tuesday and uh, I hope you're here every Tuesday to create something with me. All right, you just have to export this, click on this export button, publish and export, export as, and you can export it as a PNG, JPEG or whatever you want. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.